example of stuff going on. Like they might have problems at home and they don't, and some people don't know their full agreement, so they just say stuff to make you sad or mad and stuff. And what would that be doing? What would they be doing with their word? Not being impeccable. Not being impeccable. And what does it mean to be impeccable with your word? To be impeccable with your word means like when you say nice and kind things. It's kind of like some people say I be dumb something like that. Yeah. And you don't know what's gonna happen, and it just and you just agree with that, and you're gonna think you gonna think it just dumb. take time and just think about like what's stressing you out so much, and just think about you know what I'm just gonna keep going for it, keep pushing, and just always do my best. How does doing your best apply to the rest of the three agreements? Um, when you don't make assumptions, you can always try to do your best to not make assumptions, and you can always try your best to not take things personally, and to um, be impeccable with your word. You can always be try your best to not be impeccable with your word, even though you might mess up and use not impeccable words. It's not impeccable. You can always try your best to use nice words. Are you growing in your reading? Yeah. Focusing. Focusing? What does it look like to focus for you? Mm, it's like I can concentrate easier and I like know how to read better than I used to be at school. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between reading here and reading at school? Um, at school, it's a lot of people and they come up to the teacher and they're reading and like they're distracted and like I can't really do a lot of things and I can't read because it's a whole bunch of kids at school but at summer camp it's not a lot of kids and they usually just don't really talk. They talk but like they don't yell and talk. You don't get as distracted here as you would at school. Yes. Ryan Mays here from GTOT and today I want to talk to you about our reading program. Here at GTOT um, our reading program is pretty much a staple of what we do here. Um, a lot of times we catch students who aren't able to read. Um, some way they slip by, go through the cracks of the school system, and they're, they're not able to read for some reason. So our plan is pretty much to get students, um, whether they can read at a high level or not, see what level that they're on, and implement a reading program for them. So the students who aren't able to read, we assess them. Even the students who can read, we assess them, see where they're at, and we implement um, about a 10 week reading program. We're able to break things down for the students differently from the way a school might do it. School may have, a uh, school teacher may have so many things going on at one time, but we're able to give students one-on-one -on -one attention. And we're, we're, we have success stories where students came in not being able to read, um, made it to up to sixth grade at some points. And so what we do is we break things down and we're able to help the kids understand and help them to learn and help them to pretty much become um, not being able to read to at a level to where they can read on their own with some with a little bit of assistance. We have students coming in not reading as much during the summertime, but by the end of the summer we're reading uh, about two to three times a day every day. It's like drilling things in, um, in a boot camp type setting to where students are going to um, be reading and they don't always despise it. They really uh, turn to a point to where they really enjoy the reading because they see themselves growing. Um, and one thing we check for is comprehension. What are, what are you reading about? Tell me about what you're reading. Ask some in-depth questions to check for understanding. And also we, um, we see our students as um, not taking a lapse, not taking a, um, a break from the learning curve, but to keep them in full stride as the school year goes on. Most students who are not participating in our program, they may take um, maybe a month, even two months to catch on to the what the teacher is talking about. But our students, day one, they're running full stride. They've been learning the whole summer and they're just just using that, that, that um, having their brain ignited all throughout the summer is just translating to the school year. So um, that's one unique thing about us. And one of the staples of our program is our reading program. So, so we're, we're really thankful to even have the group that we have during the summer. Um, a lot of parents were uncertain and skeptical um, amidst the pandemic that went, but we did what we can to ensure safety to the parents that we're working with and let them know that we're that working with a nurturing staff and we're keeping, we're doing all that we can to keep their kids safe as far as sanitizing our facility and, and masking up. So. And we're also looking forward to working with kids um, in the fall semester. We have an option where we're gonna be providing 
uh, our facility as a resource for kids who are um, engaging in virtual learning as a source. So we will provide um, our building as a as an option where parents can send their kids here so we can help them with um, their academics and just further assist with whatever they have as far as assignments from their teachers or from We're really looking forward to the fall and um, more information will be given about that soon. And um, we're just thankful for, for everything that we have right now because a lot of uh, camps, a lot of facilities aren't operating right now. And to just have the success that we're having, it's like it's such a thing right now. So uh, that, that's, that's what uh, we have going on here. Too. I believe, I believe.